We feel the anointing of God in the air. We ask God to uh, bless us with uh, his word that he may give to you what he has given to me in the name of Jesus. I thank God that um, forgive me the message on today, which is entitled Mountain Moving Faith. This is the first sermon of the year, Mountain Moving Faith. And our scripture will be coming from Mark 11 and 11. Actually, it's Mark 11 and 11 and reading on to the 23rd verse. Amen. And this backdrop is the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is a mountain on adjacent to Jerusalem. And it's a very high mountain near the city of ancient Jerusalem. And the scripture reads as thus. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all things, and now the evening time was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they had come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree off having leaves, he came, if happily, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And the disciples heard it. Remember that. His disciples heard it. Verse 19. And when even was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remember it, saying unto him, Master, look, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Amen. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, Amen. That those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Have faith in God. Mountain moving faith. Amen. So this is the setting of Jesus and his 12 disciples. It's just coming from Mark 11. He's just coming from the Hosanna. Um, He's riding on a, a coat that has never been ridden before, and they are throwing palm trees in his path, singing Hosanna unto the highest, the King of Kings. He is traveling through Jerusalem, and they are worshiping him. They are giving him honor because he is the king. Amen. They are giving him honor. Amen. He is Jesus. Amen. So after this, he finds himself near Jerusalem, goes to the Mount of Olives, and he's hungry. He's hungry. Amen. Jesus was a man. Amen. So he sees a tree, he sees a fig tree, and um, it doesn't say how far it was away, but let's say for instance, a uh, football field away, okay, a um, hundred yards, for instance. He sees a fig tree that looks like it's in full bloom, because the leaves are present. And usually when a fig tree leaves are present, there's fruit on the tree. Amen. So he sees it far off. And this tree, he um, approaches the tree. And when he gets to the tree, he noticed the leaves, but there is no fruit. Now he just got done through, got done um, doing ministry and being um, having a big service, so to speak, and um, everybody in town is there. And, and so after the service, he's hungry. But you know, preachers get hungry, amen? And when he got hungry, he did not see fruit. And the scripture says that he said that to the tree, he pronounced to the tree, no man shall eat fruit of you from here on out. 
and then he went his way. They later went back to Bethany, went back to town. And they didn't say he got any food there, but he was still hungry. So they noticed the tree coming back from Bethany. Because the scripture says that his disciples heard what he said. There would be no fruit from this tree from here on out. And when they walked past the tree, the tree was withered up and dried up. And one of the disciples, Peter, said, that's that tree that you said that you cursed. It's dried up. Look. And Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Don't you know, have faith. Don't you know that statement can be used for 99% of the issues of life in a response? You can say that to any, and speak that to any situation. Have faith in God. Amen. So he's talking about mountains. How did he get to the mountain? He got from the fig tree to the mountains. He said, for verily I say unto you that whoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart because a double minded person is unstable. But shall believe, live as those things are true, and have already manifested, that those things which he says, which you have said, believe those things which you have said, shall come to pass. Speak the truth, he shall have these things. Amen? If you believe what you say is the truth, and you believe it in your heart, you shall have those things. He's giving us a principle here. You shall have whatever you say. The truth will make you free. Jesus said, I am the truth. The truth is important when you're dealing with the things of God and you're dealing with the things you want to manifest in your life. Amen? And the truth of the matter is, the fig tree wasn't talking the truth. He wasn't truthful. God created everything. He created the birds, the sea creatures, the creatures that fly. He created the, the, the um, every tree, every shrub. And everything has a program to reproduce. Everything is in season to reproduce in this season. Well, that fig tree was saying that it had fruit, but it was not telling the truth. The truth will make you free. So, why, why, why this now? It says, if you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the midst of the sea. This mountain. So they were in the Mount of Olives. They're in the situation, how Jesus responded to them, have faith in God. Jesus, I see Jesus saying, if you shall say to this mountain, the mountain that he was talking about was a particular mountain. This mountain. Now, a mountain can represent an a, a issue that you have, something that's hard to overcome in your life. Now, most people have more than one problem. A mountain can be a problem. Amen? So if you have a problem, it's a particular problem. That's why I say this mountain. He didn't say a mountain. And a lot of times when we pray, we don't God answer our prayers because we're praying amiss. We're not praying that God remove this mountain. We say God remove a mountain. But he's talking, Jesus said this mountain, a particular mountain. And what was so special about this mountain? He just looked, Mount to Olives, it could have been another mountain. But a mountain, he said this mountain. So he was saying this particular mountain, the mountain that saw the fig tree wither up. Now look at the setting. This mountain witnessed the fig tree being cursed and witnessed the fig tree drying up. So it was this mountain that you speak to that saw one of your victories before. So you just don't run up to a mountain and say, be thou removed and cast into the midst of the sea. You got to say to this mountain, and this mountain is the mountain that you saw, that saw 
you get a victory before. So if you got a mountain in your life, you got to remove some small stuff first. You got to do some small things first before you jump up to a mountain. You got to go through the ranks, so to speak. You got to do something small, get a small victory, and have that problem see you overcome that small victory. And when that problem sees that, okay, they coming for me next. So if you say to this mountain be removed and cast in the midst of the sea, the mountain that witnessed you overcome drugs, the mountain to see you uh, get your family members saved, the mountain to see you uh, um, get elevated on a job after they uh, mistreated you. These are all mountains. Whatever you got is a mountain. But that mountain has to see you overcome something smaller before you said, before they start to move out the way. Amen. That's why Jesus said, verily I say unto you that who shall say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea shall and not doubt in his heart. This mountain. You should have whatever you have. Now, Peter said, we see you curse the tree. We heard, they heard it. They heard him say that. Amen. And it's like fool's gold. You ever watch a Western movie and they got something called fool's gold and people who be digging for gold and stuff and they look like gold, but it's not gold. You know, and, and that's how sometimes people portray their lives. They look like something, but they're not that. They have form and fashion, but they have no power. It's like that tree. It had the fig tree, look like it had leaves on it, but when he puts the leaves aside, it had no fruit. So many times we need to make sure that our life is the truth. Is that we're saying everything that, that we can produce what we say. Amen. Years ago, I had, had a, I was on a mission to, to, from God. And you have different organizations in a city um, that say, okay, they'll help you with your light bill. Another organization say, they'll help you with food. Another organization say, they'll help you with drug uh, rehabilitation. The, all the, they got so many organizations. Um, whatever you need, an organization is, it has a, a, um, a motto and it has a, um, foundation um what you call it, uh plan. So what I used to do is find that go around to these organizations and see if they meant what they said. A lot of places portray that they do something but they don't do it. And Jesus cursed the fig tree because it didn't do what it was supposed to do. Amen. Now a curse is just merely speaking bad as opposed to speaking good. That word eulogy means to speak good of. To speak bad is basically a curse. It's not particularly a four-letter word. It's just saying something like, you will never amount to anything. That's a curse. Saying something like that to a child, you will, uh, you will never be able to do math. That is a curse. And then if you receive it and say, I'm not good at math, then you receive that. You may be a mathematical genius underneath it all. But if you receive those words, a curse is a word. It's like Jesus said, you shall not bear fruit. So you have to, what? Not receive those words that are spoken. Jesus spoke these words and it was the truth. And the, the tree Withered up. When sometimes when uh, words are spoken against you, then and you don't receive it. Say if somebody say something bad about you or about what you're trying to do and God is giving you to do. Well, that curse has to go somewhere. Scripture says here that a curse causeless shall not come. That's um, Proverbs 26 and 2. The scripture in King James says, As a bird by wandering, as a swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. 
And the New American Standard Version says, like a sparrow in its flirting, flitting, like in its flying, so a curse without a cause does not come to rest. See, a curse has to rest. Because a curse is words, spiritual, something spoken. Just like us, uh, demonic demons are spirits. They look for a place to rest. And those curses carried by demons looking for a place to rest. Don't let them rest upon you. Just don't receive them. Hey, that's not me. You can't stop the birds from flying, but you can stop them from landing on you. Like a sparrow with its flirting, like a swallow in its flying, an undeserved curse goes nowhere. But the word is spoken out. I, I got a question. This is this is a rhetorical question. Um, when someone speaks bad to you and you don't receive it, what where do those words go? They gotta land somewhere. Well, I just gotta insert a scripture, you shall reap what you sow. They might go back where they came from. So that's why the scriptures say, let God fight your battles. Because everybody that's coming against you, and when you're in the will of God, they hurting themselves when God has his hand on your life. Amen? Nehemiah 13 and 1 says God turns a curse into the blessing. He can turn somebody's bad words that's pointed towards you into a blessing. Scripture says, Nehemiah 13, 1, B, and 2, the Ammonite and the Moabite shall not come into the congregation of God forever because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water, bread and water, but they what? Hired Balaam against them. They hired that false prophet against them that he shall curse them, howbeit our God turned a curse into a blessing. So when you when you're small, when you're young, when you when you see the devil likes to attack the weak things. The, the, the enemy likes to kick you when you're down, they're trying to kick you in your developmental stage. When you're still in a womb, they're trying to abort you. Don't you know that's they call it about black on black crime? The work, the most uh, highest rate of deaths of black people is abortion. But they don't talk about that. That's the highest rate. The devil wants to kill you when you're weak, when you can't move, when, when you're sick. He wants to destroy you. So the children of Israel walking toward the promised land, they, they, they were conquering um, people. They were uh, conquering um, different tribes and different um, ites. And the, the Ammon and um, the Ammon and Moabite, they hired Balaam to curse them. But God turned that curse into a blessing. Now, your spoken word, now your sp spoken word can do miracles. The words you speak out your mouth can do miracles. Because the supernatural world moves out the way to bring it to you. Because what? You're a child of God. Amen? But it doesn't work with the enemy. It doesn't work with people who are not under God's um, dominion, not fully. You may do something a miracle, a miracle like uh, in the book of uh, Acts, Acts 19 chapter, Paul was laying hands on people. Um, people were getting healed. People were um, raising, raising from the, you know, dropping all their, their tumors and things of this nature. And these men saw Paul do that and said, I want that power too. Right? And it says um, Acts 11 Acts verse 11, chapter 19 says, and God brought special, special miracles by the hands of Paul so that his body were brought into the sick with handkerchiefs so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. But there were certain Jews in Exodus who took the call upon them which had evil spirits, the name of Jesus saying, we adjure you by, by Jesus whom Paul preached. So you had these people 
that wasn't right. They, the scripture called them vagabond Jews and exorcists. And there were also seven sons of one man named Sceva, a Jew and a chief of the priests, which did also. They saw all these miracles. They saw all these things that the wonders of God was doing through Paul. And, they, and the people, that the, the vagabond and the exorcists, they said, we want to do that too. So they spoke. They spoke to these evil spirits. Verse 15 said, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? See, the, 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 even the devils and demons know the children of God. And your word holds weight in that spiritual realm. So the evil spirits ask these people, I know, I know Paul, I know Jesus, but I don't know you. And the scripture says, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on and overcame them and prevailed against them. So they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Naked and wounded. This was something that took place because they didn't know what they, they tried to mimic the things that God, God's man was doing. Amen. They had that. They were like that fig tree. That fig tree who was not producing what it was meant to produce. And we see in scripture another, another um, instance of figs. And we can see that in the book of Genesis. Amen. The book of Genesis when um, they, Adam and Eve was in the garden. And they took of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree that God told them not to take of. Amen. They were innocent, but the tree looked good to, for fruit. It looked like it would give them knowledge and it looked, it would make them wise. So what they do, they took this, they took this fruit. And, and when they took the fruit, it says their eyes were open. So when their eyes was open, they had shame because they saw themselves naked. But before that, they didn't have any shame. And, and and you can look at uh you can look at this psychologically also. Figs the, the the when you have shame, you try to hide it. You try to hide it and try to fit in. You try to look like everybody else, but you got pain in your heart. And sometimes we hide it with smiles, sometimes we hide it by talking loud and talking a lot. Some people talk a lot, talk loud and laugh and all this. They hide in pain. They hide in shame. God don't want that. He don't want you to be shame. He just wants you to obey him. You don't have to fit in with the other people. You don't have to hide. Just come, just do what you were produced to do. The fig tree was, was meant to produce uh, figs. And it didn't produce the figs. And the tree had leaves on it and was hiding the fact that they had no fruit. Adam and Eve, they hid themselves, they hid their nakedness with fig leaves. They knew they were naked. But God told them, who told you we're naked? How do you know this? Because they had shame because they disobeyed, dis sorry, disobeyed God. Sometimes when you do something that you're not supposed to, that you do something that's opposite in what you're supposed to do, then you hide it. Because you're shame. You hide it in so many ways. But the only thing you have to do is do what God tells you to do. Then you, that removes the shame. And the enemy uses that shame. He uses it in condemnation. Anytime you try to move out, he try to bring up the fact that you did this, that you did that. It's the enemy says, the, the Bible says that the enemy um, accused is the accuser of the brother, and he accuses us day and night. So imagine if he got something on you. He really gonna be in God's face. Look at him. Ain't no good. He gonna do it anyway. But God say he he shall not tarry in my sight. A liar, because because the devil is a liar. So he accuse you anyway, even if it's not the truth. But if you do something and it's truthful, he really gonna try to accuse you. So we need to get rid of the shame, come up straight street, 
and do the things that God requires of us. Don't be like that fig tree. Amen? Because if the fig tree had fruit, Jesus wouldn't have cursed it. But some people aren't as smart as Jesus, and they try to curse you when you produce some fruit. But that curse is going to come back on them. But if you're not producing fruit and they curse you, don't let it be that way. So do what you say and say what you mean and mean what you say. It's not hard. And what happens is many times we have shame. Many times we don't want to do what God is telling us to do. God said, get it right and do it this way. And then it will be acceptable, Cain. Do it right. Only thing you have to do is bring an animal and sacrifice it and receive, and I receive the blood. But some people, they want to do stuff their own way. And they want to put God in a box. And they want to want God to receive their offering because this is the way they want to give it. But God gave them an instruction to give it a particular way. See, Cain brought fruit from the ground. And that wasn't acceptable. Sometimes we bring stuff that is not acceptable to God. And God said, if if you get it right, Cain, I will accept it. You know, you okay, Cain? You know, you make a mistake to say, I made that mistake. I'm sorry. Let me get it right. But many people, they can't say that. They got to be right. And they fix it up all kind of ways, even when they're wrong, they say that they're right. And you know what happens over time? You form a reprobate mind. That's a mind that says that you you think you're right, but you're wrong. What if Paul would have said to Jesus after he fell off his beast? What if he would have said, who are you? You're nobody. Instead, when Paul fell off his beast, he said, Lord, Lord. And he received what God said. When God tells us what to do, when he knocks us off our high horse, we say, yes, Lord, I'm sorry. I do what we have. To, I do what I have to do. Amen. So we don't we want to have that mountain moving faith, that faith that says, OK, move and be cast into the midst of the sea. In order for that to happen, you have to do something small for a mountain. A mountain is a big problem. You have small problems. You have small, real small, minute problems. You know, you wake up with problems. You got to brush your teeth. Then after you brush your teeth, that solves a small problem, right? But you have big problems also. So you got to small, do the small problems and let the mountain see you do that small problem. Do the small problem. And then the mountain will say, okay, I need to go jump in the sea. Amen. So we thank God for mountain moving faith. Mountain moving faith is the faith that God said that we can have. And we can have anything we want. Amen. We thank God for this lesson today. We thank God for your attentive listening. And we ask God to add a blessing to your life that you receive the word. And uh, if God has something for you, that it may grow and that you may have fruit there.